Our next inductee is Jeanette Picard, and we're going to have an introduction here for Jim Fromm, a local favorite here. Um, where's Jim? Where is he? There he is. All right, Jim and his wife Rita have been involved in ballooning here in Indianola since 1974, <clears throat> when they began when they began crewing for the World Balloon at the, during the Nationals. Jim and Rita bought their first balloon in the late 80s and were part of the first National Balloon Classic here in 1989. Since then, they have owned <clears throat> excuse me, two more balloons, but Jim has flown in many others as a commercial pilot. Uh, they and their family have been very active in the Indianola balloon community, helping to train other pilots, volunteering at the Classic, and, and, and here with the National Balloon Museum. They have a passion and love for ballooning and would love to share that passion with others. One thing I can tell you about Jim Fromm is he has trained many, many pilots in this area and has never taken a dime for it. Jim Fromm. Good afternoon. Um, I had kind of a strange road that brought me here <clears throat> back uh, many years ago. We had Don Picard as a speaker for a safety seminar in Des Moines, and I was uh, tasked to bring him to Des Moines and, and you know, counsel him or shepherd him or whatever. Um, it was interesting. He stayed at our house in the morning of the seminar, or maybe the morning after, I'm not sure which. He announced as we were eating breakfast that, that he peed in my shower. And, uh, and every time I take a shower now, I, I get to think of that, which is, is okay. <laughs> but I just want to start out with that. Part of the, part of the stuff that, that his, his granddaughter, or, or Jeanette's granddaughter wrote, it was, was about their, her grandma's sense of humor and, and wit and how it carried through to her sons, and it definitely did. Um, but uh, Don and I became not close necessarily, but at least familiar. And with his contribution to the museum and some of the advice and in, in, in the displays and stuff like that, working closely with Becky and Gill, uh, it was an interesting relationship that Don and I had. And uh, I spent a lot of time on the phone with him and talking to him and, and stuff. So it was uh, that's what why I'm up here. Uh, is that, uh, when when Jeanette was nominated. Uh, and accepted for this Hall of Fame, um, their daughter, her granddaughter, Jeanette's granddaughter, Mary Lou Picard, reached out to me to help with this. Uh, so, unfortunately, uh, her health is not so good right now, and she deeply regrets not being here. She she wrote a thing for me to read to you guys, um, and I hope you'll bear with me just a minute as we do that. I uh, also wanted to say <clears throat> that uh, one of the things that uh, was, was said about Jeanette was that, that she was good. This is a curator at the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum wrote that... That in his view, the Picard's entrepreneurship and sub subsequent s success in ballooning was due to their enormous persistence and considerable confidence, pluck, and luck. And I can tell you, uh, Jeanette Picard was the first woman uh, given a, a pilot's license in the United States, and her significant flight was with a 600,000 cubic foot hydrogen balloon with, I don't know how many tons of ballast, but uh, a, a flight of 300 miles. I mean, that was why she, one of the reasons that why she's being recognized today was that accomplishment to, to 57,000 and some feet uh, above the ground. So definitely a, a very significant uh, flight and, and, and a big first for aviation in the United States. So uh, in addition to this, uh, we've, we've got another little literally last minute thing that, uh, that Mary Lou sent to us as we were pulling into the parking lot. Uh, she said, one, one very, very insistent about this, very passionate, she's a very passionate lady. Uh, so, so this is from her, it says, before I begin this, I want to give a big giant shout out to Becky and Gil Wigley. 
Well, it is not lost on me that without Becky doing what she has done for the past hundreds of years, it must seem like that to her, that there would not be a balloon museum in Indianola. <coughs> My dad, Don Picard, made that very clear to me, that Becky is the balloon museum. During the last nine months, I've come to know her and respect her, and anyone should be getting a plaque, <coughs> thanking her for a long, unpaid volunteer position. <coughs> Excuse me. It is Becky Wayland. Now, thank you on my grandmother. I'm going to grab my water real quick. So, um, this is from her. And basically, it's a thank you to the National Balloon Museum and the Board uh, Selection Committee for inducting Jeanette Picard into your Balloon Hall of Fame. Uh, Bill Clemens, I uh, believe, had, had tried to or, or nominate her for induction for many years and was very passionate about her and her accomplishments early in, you know, back in the, the mid to early 30s for, for ballooning and all the involvement that she and her, her husband, John, had in, uh, in, in gas ballooning and in just the whole development of, of aviation back in those days. Um, so, uh, thank you, thank you for the good fight, Bill. And congratulations to the other inductees. You just made a memory for our family to be treasured. I know when my dad, Don, was inducted, he was very moved, and of course it meant a great deal to his family. And thank you to Jim Fromm for reading these words in my absence. Turns out that you cannot be in two places at once. Jim and, Jim and Rita were very kind to offer to host me, and I'm sorry that I won't be able to spend time with them this summer, hopefully next summer. So. I was asked to keep this around 10 minutes, hard to do when there's so much to say. The brochure you've been given about Jeanette goes into much more great detail, and there's also a lot of information on the internet about uh, Jeanette and John and all the work that, uh, the, the amazing things that they did. Uh, Jeanette did not uh, let being a woman get in her way or stop her passion to explore, learn, get an education, educate others, and accomplish what she was told she could not do. When she wanted to be a, to pilot a balloon into the stratosphere so her husband could perform his experiments with, with cosmic radiation, she was told no, because no one would sponsor her. The sole reason was because she was a woman, a mother with three children. <clears throat> when one door was shut, she went to the next, and to the next, not giving up nor giving in. All they needed was one sponsor. The combination of Henry Ford, People's Outfitters Company, Rigsby, Run Row Radio Company, and the Detroit Aero Club opened that door. <clears throat> when her desire at the age of 11 to become an Episcopal priest, I can't even talk, horrified her Victorian mother, instead of acquiescing, she never let go of that dream and accomplished it in her 70 years. With ten other women who still insisted that she be the first, made history and broke, free, broke the fresco ceiling, paving the way for other women, all women, in the future to be ordained as priests as well as bishops. Jeanette fought for people of color to be seen and be heard to make uh, St. Philip's the primary black uh, Episcopal church in St. Paul her home <clears throat> until the end of her life. She served alongside Father Denzel Cardi and stood beside him in his fight for equality and civil rights. One of my favorite, favorite moments with my grandmother Picard uh, was taking communion from her at St. Philip's. As I kneeled uh, for the bread of Christ, I looked up at her, smiled, looked deep into my eyes, or she smiled, looked deep into my eyes, and with a slight wink placed the bread in my open palms. We held that gaze for a few seconds, forever in my visual memory. In her early 80s, Jeanette stood on the curb in front of her Minneapolis home and cheered on hundreds of women and men who were marching for women's rights. Garrison Keeler of Prairie Home Companion was there as well. Decades later, my daughters <coughs> and I met Mr. Keeler. When I introduced myself, he smiled and he said, are, were you related to Jeanette Picard? He told us about the march and, and all those years ago when he recognized Jeanette standing on her front lawn and he stopped to talk with her. Apparently, she left a strong, positive, and joyful impression on him. How her encouragement for the marchers was infectious. 
She told them that she would have been marching alongside them if she could have. She spent her entire life lifting up others, people less fortunate, underserved, encouraging young women who were told no, or elderly folks, some younger than her, who needed someone to talk to. She stood up for what was right in this world, as well as speaking out as against what wasn't. <clears throat> Jeanette stood next to and supported her husband and partner in her life, Dr. Jean Picard, as well as her sons, John, Paul, and Donald, and her 13 grandchildren, and a couple of great-grandchildren. My grandmother passed away, uh, passed down an energy and sense of humor to her sons, <clears throat> and in turn they passed that same along to their children. My cousins, sister, and I all have great stories about Granny. Each one is different, but the same in the sense of feeling loved, respected, and encouraged to always do the best we could do. She was young at heart and funny to the end. The last time I saw her, she taught me the proper way to pack, to pack a suitcase. The gift she gave me, which I also forgot got from my dad, was feeling comfortable being at risk, being a, a risk taker, knowing uh, that I could do whatever I set out to do to set my mind to. On more than one occasion, Jeanette told me, darling, you could do anything a man can do, and most likely you will do it better. <laughs> I would have loved for her uh, to be alive when I became a stunt woman, one of two in New York City at the time. I was in a man's world keeping up with them when I was uh, faced with the challenge, I welcomed it. One day I asked if I was afraid of heights, I smiled and responded, nope, not in my genes. <laughs> so, thank you. you. May you have gentle winds, beautiful weather, and soft landings this week. Very pleased with the party. Thank you. Can you come on up? And Becky really is the queen of, of doing stuff that uh, needs done. And I tell you what, thank you for all you do. Well, why don't we both walk on, sure. Cool. All right. Um, and, and one thing I want to know, I mean, when she was the very first woman to get a pilot's license, she was the very first woman to fly, and the National Geographic even wanted to um, put her in the magazine, but the government said, no, because we don't want women to think they can do things like that. <laughs> so, yay, girls. <laughs> anyway, but she was quite a lady. Yep. And the one for Mrs. Picard, it's got a picture of her in the... Uh, sphere and it says and then they have all these things about what she did in what year and it says forget the thousand bucks I'd do this any day of the week for free except Sundays I'm busy on Sundays 